Hello, my name is Philip Olaomi and I welcome you to Let's Talk About Worship. Here at Let's Talk About Worship, we engage the scriptures, which is God's word, to reveal God's mind about the subject of true and acceptable worship as recorded in John chapter 4, verse 24. And um, our goal is to raise an army of true worshippers across across the globe uh, using social media as a tool to make this happen. And I want to trust God that God will touch your heart as we address the, the, um, uh, the subject matter of today. Today we want to talk about the anointing, the anointing, the anointing. Now, um, it is a very important fact to understand that the ministry of a worshipper is divine. The ministry of a worshipper is not is not ordinary. It cannot be. It's not something that can be done in the flesh. John chapter four verse twenty four says God, that God is spirit, and anyone, everyone that must worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So God anoints people for this ministry, um, especially when He sees the condition of your heart. You will recall. In the book of Ezekiel chapter 28 that when God saw the condition of the heart of Lucifer when the, when God saw that that changed God ejected him from heaven immediately yes he was worshiping you know he was leading worship and different things you know in, in, in heaven but when the condition of his heart changed God ejected him from heaven Ezekiel chapter 20, 28 verse 15 says you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until iniquity was found in you so and an individual can position himself or herself to be used by God in this area especially when such a person will set out to seek God with the whole of their heart you love him you love him wholeheartedly and um, and genuinely and the subject of the anointing, you see, the, the anointing is God's deposit in your life that makes a difference in your life and ministry. The anointing, it sustains. The anointing, it preserves. The anointing enhances your ministry. In the book of Numbers chapter 20, Numbers chapter 20 verse, uh, verse 8, the scripture recorded that Aaron died when the priestly garment was stripped off him, meaning that he was being sustained by the anointing. And the moment that was stripped of him, he fell flat dead. That passage, Numbers chapter 20, 20 verse 8 says, Moses stripped Aaron off his garment and put them on, on Eleazar his son. And Aaron died there on the mountain. Then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. So when uh, and you know it is very much possible for you to lose the anointing when you lose the anointing you lose certain abilities because the anointing enhances your ministry it is it is a proof that you have god's backing and now in uh, job chapter 29 uh, verse uh, 3 to 4 um, job said just as i was in the days of my prime when the friendly counsel of god was over my tent when the almighty was yet with me when my children were around me so this passage made it clear that job lost something vital something that held his life and his blessings together and the loss of this divine attribute brought about the invasion that emptied job of everything that he had a very good explanation of uh, the of what the anointing does is well detailed in the scriptures in the book of first john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 verse 27 it says but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you you do not need that anyone teach you but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and it's true it is not a lie and just as it has taught you you will abide in him so that means that with the anointing you don't need to copy any man uh, because the anointing will teach you unique ways to make your ministry impactful and to do it in a way that god will be pleased of you know that uh, that god is going to be pleased you know ple pleased about now the anointing um, 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 you know going through what the anointing does is that you know the anointing shuts down it shuts down argument and dispute about the genuineness of your calling when you are anointed you you know there's a difference when you are when, when you're anointed what other people are struggling to do you will do with ease because you have that divine backing now in uh, Moses in numbers chapter 16 verse 28 said Moses said, by this you will know that God has sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of my own will, 
So it is the Almighty that embodies a man to speak this way. In the book of First um, Chronic, First Corinthians chapter two, verse eleven, he says, "For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God." So when you are anointed, you make the difference. And there is a difference, there's a very big difference between being talented and uh, being anointed. I know a lot of people that are highly, ta- ta- highly talented, but talent cannot take you far in God. Talent cannot take you far in God. In the book of Acts chapter, th- Acts chapter 10 verse 38, it talks about how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. It said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So that passage you will notice that the anointing came before the works. The anointing enhances the good works. The anointing makes the difference. So when a when a talented singer uh, ventures into the space of the anointed worshiper, what happened in uh, Acts chapter nine? Acts chapter nineteen is going to reoccur, and that's the passage where the son, the seven sons of Sceva, the Jewish priest, uh, they also went about to um, you know to deliver people. And verse fifteen says, "Then the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you?" Then the man whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. So when there's a difference when you are when when you are anointed. And when you lead worship as an anointed worshiper, you fulfill what the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. It said, It shall come to pass in that day that his body will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing so yokes are destroyed bodies lift not because of talent but by the anointing jesus told the, uh, his disciples the apostles in the book of uh, in the book of uh, in the book of acts not to venture into the ministry without the holy spirit without the anointing and we've talked about you know the anointing but how does the anointing come one of the ways that the anointing can uh, can come upon the life of of a person is when you raise consistent and you know consistent altar of praise and worship uh, um, you know the altar of prayers to God when you maintain a constant praise and prayers uh, a prayer lifestyle to God the anointing is going to come, come upon you and in, in addition to this, you need to live a fasted life. And this is the process of giving your spirit rule over, over your flesh. You suppress the flesh. Paul said, I put my body under. Because if you allow your body to rule, uh, your body will move you, your flesh will move you to do certain things uh, you know, that, God is not pleased, that God is not pleased about. And one of the second things, the second, the second thing I, uh, um, that, uh, the second way that, um, you know, the anointing comes is that when your way pleases the Lord, the Bible says, if a man's ways pleases the Lord, it will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's in Proverbs chapter 16, verse, uh, verse 7. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 2b says, But unto this one will I look, on him who is poor and contrite, and who trembles at my word. So if you want the anointing, you know you have to you have to remove pride from you you need to work on yourself you need to pray to god if you have any element of pride you need to pray to god that this will be off you in um, psalm chapter 66 verse 18 it says if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me so if you are harboring iniquity you are harboring sin then your ways will not please god if you have pride then your ways will not please god Psalms chapter 19, 91 verse 14 says, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. So it's very important for someone that is trusting God for the anointing to uh, uh, for, for the anointing upon their life, upon their ministry as a worshiper, that your ways will please the Lord. God told Abraham, he said, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. Walk where I will be able to see you. Don't hide anything from God. Of course, you can't hide anything from him. He sees, he sees everything. Uh, Joseph said, will I do this and sin against God? 
you know so we need to maintain a holy life we need to maintain a righteous life we need, we need to, uh, to 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 make our lives to please to please god in every way and the third uh, thing, you know, is that the third way that the anointing comes, of course, this list, you know, is not exhaustive, you know, but um, uh, um, I just wanted to list these three points, uh, you know, that we can, that we can work on if you want to work in the anointing. The, 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 the last point I do have here is serving sacrificially and genuinely. When you serve an anointed, um, you know, minister of God genuinely, that anointing will rub on you. It will rub on you and it can be translated into different ways you know the the, the man of god may carry you know certain graces and uh, for for those that will be committed you know to his ministry those things will be you know will will be displayed in different ways if you are a worshiper and you are serving genuinely that anointing is going to come upon you if you are um if you if you are interested in writing and uh, uh, you know it, there are so many graces that you can that that, that you can that you can uh, um, that you can get. You now, so when you serve genuinely, it makes the difference in your life. In the book of Second um, uh, Kings, chapter three, the Bible says concerning Elijah that he poured water on the hand of Elijah. So uh, that passage in Second Kings, chapter three, verse eleven says, "But Joseph had said, Is there no prophet?" of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him so one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said Elisha the son of Shaphat is here who poured water on the hands of Elijah so what validated the ministry of Elisha here was that he served Elijah and they knew that there was no way that someone would serve Elijah genuinely and the spirit of Elijah would not come upon him and that was why when Elijah was taken up uh, the sons of the prophet the moment they saw Elisha they said the spirit of Elijah rest upon Elisha so when you serve genuinely when you serve sacrificially the anointing it comes upon you it comes upon you so today we've been able to um, address the need uh, for the anointing and how to enhance and how it will enhance your ministry so we're going to continue on this this same topic next week i hope i've been able to communicate god's mind to you regarding uh, the issue of uh, you know the anointing i want to thank you again thank you thank you for joining me this week please don't forget to subscribe to my channel philip allow me music um, on uh, Facebook and on um, YouTube. Instagram is Philip Olaomi. And uh, also share this, like it, share this video, uh, share it with others for them to be blessed just as you are. Thank you again. God bless you. And see you next week. Amen.